So I think Wargaming have made a slight mistake with their latest tank and it's because it's probably a lot stronger than it should have been and it almost feels like they've made a brand new FE4211 which is of course in tier 3 or era 3 within Cold War because we didn't have an FE4211 in Cold War so that's exactly what they went ahead and made and made it even better and that is exactly what we're showcasing here in today's video is the brand new object 477A uh, Molo or Molot or whatever you want to call it. I call it the broken um, and we're going to show off some gameplay in a second but I wanted to cover what this tank is all about, how it actually plays in the game, the armor model which is one of the main problems with this vehicle because you know a tank that can deal 760 damage in just a small time frame of 8.96 seconds and be able to go, you know, 82 and a half kilometers an hour, have 3,750 hit points and armor that is genuinely just a meme when it comes to trying to pen this thing from the front. Now, why is this tank so annoying to play up against? Well, as you can see, basically the entire vehicle is covered with spaced armor and it means that you have very few places where you can actually pen this thing and essentially you have to get pretty lucky with the accuracy to be able to pen this thing. Now there is some areas which you can pen from the front but they are so few and far between that it is almost impossible and what I mean by that is you see this turquoise bit at the front which is raised up as you can see from the frontal profile that has these little blocks in the middle or in front of them which of course act as spaced armor because you know having your weak points concealed by even more spaced armor is perfectly fine and so the real way that you pen this thing is essentially near that turret ring which you can pen but has spaced armor everywhere and of course the lower plate if for some magical reason you can actually hit that blue strip that is on the bottom of the tank then yes you can pen but I mean, have you seen how small it is? And most tanks are going to be above you, which means that they're going to be shooting at an angle like this, which means, yeah, I mean, um, you try hit that in a reliable fashion. And so your best place to actually hit this thing is going for potentially the mantlet if you have super high penetration or if you're able to hit that turquoise area or hit down into the upper uh, kind of area of the mantlet uh, and around there where you can go into this green section around the turret ring. But I mean... It's not even like when it side scrapes is particularly too easy to pen. Now you can pen this thing when it does side scrape but you have to go in through the frontal inner track because of course why not add even more spaced armor all over the sides and not just one bit of spaced armor but one and then there's an extra piece of spaced armor that you can see. So this is one piece on the side and another piece and essentially just filled with pieces of spaced armor absolutely everywhere within this tank which makes it really really annoying and we'll show off some gameplay where you can see the spaced armor working and how it actually plays in the game and essentially your only real way of dealing damage front uh, or to this tank is to not face it frontally and hope that you can manage to hit the side armor which is why you've probably been seeing this thing in Cold War devastating era 3 right now and uh, as a player that has not particularly played an inordinate amount of era 3 within Cold War you know I can have games that we're gonna see and also uh, yeah you'll find it's just not particularly very fun to play against to be honest with you with just how it plays in game because it is such a boring tank. You see this thing facing you it's essentially just a oh well I'm gonna have to try and get round it but when it has 82 kilometers an hour and has a traverse speed of the turret and tracks uh, in the region of about 70 degrees a second it's very difficult to get round the back of this thing and it also absorbs those missile hits because it's got a load of spaced armor. Uh, so yeah, really looking like a pretty balanced tank in my opinion. Oh wait, nope. Um, and so, I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it probably has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it's uh, 15,900 gold. And of course, uh, I wonder how much uh, 15,900 gold would be. Oh, oh, um... 
Oh yeah, forty-five pounds or about fifty-five dollars. Yeah, I mean, uh, has nothing to do with that though. I, I don't know why I even mentioned it, but you know, this tank is uh, is very solid, and the penetration on the standard rounds, because uh, you know, having a decent penetration on standard rounds would be nice, wouldn't it? To earn even more silver, because the silver bonus on this tank is sixty-five percent. Um, let's have a look at another era three, for example. So, you could play the Object 477A, or, you know, you could play the Cat B Thumper, which, uh, you know, armor-wise, doesn't have any spaced armor, gets penned in the turret all the time, has less alpha, has less uh, damage per minute. Um, yeah, I mean, you could play the Thumper, which is a pretty decent tank. Or you could play the 477A. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would definitely play the Thumper now that I have the 477A. Uh, or, you know, you could always play the Type 59D. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, TCM, AGS, maybe. I mean, it has an autoloader. Oh, oh, it doesn't actually get any armor. Hmm. All of these other tanks seem to have balancing features, like, you know, they, they can be penned, like the MBT-70 gets high alpha, doesn't get very much penetration, doesn't get uh, super high damage compared to uh, the other vehicles in the tier. I mean, it's the same as what you see in the 477A, essentially, just slightly less. But, you know, it does get an extra 500 penetration on the 477A. Um, uh, maybe it's because they get more view range. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it does get slightly more view range, but... <laughs> primarily don't want to be sat at the back sniping with this thing. Although if you do do it, it's pretty overpowered. So I think we've talked enough about this tank. I've shown you the uh, the meme power that this tank actually has in the game. And of course, uh, you know, one of those turrets that is basically impossible to hit. And you do also have six degrees of gun depression. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess they did balance it to be fair by giving it a 70 degree either side uh, your limit. So you can only turn the turret 70 degrees, but... I mean, you turn the hull at 70 degrees a second, so it doesn't really become a problem ever, really. I mean, maybe you get tracked and someone goes around the side of you, but yeah. Anyway, let's jump into the actual gameplay here and see what this tank is all about. Now then, the first game that we do have is on Hailbron, and uh, yeah, I mean, this game was uh, my first game in the tank, so a very nice uh, start to, uh, to how this tank actually plays in the game. And uh, I want to talk to you not all about this tank because, you know, um, I think we all understand how good this tank is going to be just purely statistically and how uh, its armor model works from the front and how good it's going to be at being able to bounce rounds as well as deal huge amounts of damage in a very, very short period of time. And here you go, we managed to actually pen the Object 477A on the enemy team, which is nice, yes, finally. Bit of damage right at the start, nice little 750 roll, uh, and of course that was actually a low roll because uh, yeah, nice little 750. Either way, uh, M1, you know, a tank in era three that's supposed to be the heavy tank or at least a somewhat heavy tank, but um, yeah, against 900 penetration, the turret cheeks, which are supposedly fairly strong, and the roof of the tank is uh, yeah an auto pen. So uh, yeah, thanks uh, thanks very much for um, you know being a good heavy tank. Um, so I guess you know it could have just been a coincidence. I mean we missed there on the M1. So uh, I guess that's the only real way he's going to be able to bounce our shell. Uh, or you know we could focus some of the medium tanks in the game as well and deal a ton of damage. But my main gripe with this tank is that Wargaming seem recently to be so blasé with some of their premium tanks that they just release them. Uh, and they very much don't think about the overall balance. Maybe they wanted a way of balancing the weasel toe because, you know, that was a great feature as well. And if you just introduce more and more overpowered premiums, that apparently that makes it uh, everything just not as good uh, other than the tech tree tanks that, uh, you know, people actually have to play and don't have to pay £50 for one tank, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that would be nice, um, but unfortunately, it's all of the tech tree vehicles that end up being uh, caught up in the overpowered power creep that we see within World of Tanks, and in the current state of World of Tanks, it just seems like they're going in and in on these kind of uh, more and more 
dominant tanks and it's just a shame that they all have to be the premium ones at the moment at least when it comes to cold war there are some pretty well strong premium shall we say and i mean they seemingly haven't noticed that from their fe4211 uh, vehicle that they introduced as part of one of the first premium tanks that they did in cold war that it was very 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 strong and uh, yeah i mean pretty overpowered compared to the rest of the tanks in era 2 and you know I thought maybe they'd have learnt their mistake it seemed like they had uh, thought about it and you know tried to avoid doing that again with some of the other premiums that they've released there's a few cold war premiums that are not particularly amazing uh, and then they introduce uh, one like this which completely goes against all of the balancing features that you typically see in world of tanks and of course it negatively impacts the game quite a bit I mean not just slightly I mean this tank is just horrible to play against if you're playing in a medium tank I mean it's difficult to pen it uh, your only real benefit is to try and go around the side of it but remember this thing doesn't have bad DPM it is able to dish out 5,000 damage per minute pretty consistently uh, I mean yeah it, it's just horrible and you can see here we did uh, what 6,700 damage and I've literally not left a hill and this is case in point here is a heavy tank at the tier, supposedly got armor, right, the M1A2, um, you know, the top tier vehicle, I believe, and um, yeah, I mean, side armor, pretty paper, he wasn't super over-angling, maybe over-angling slightly, but, you know, it's, it's not the worst in the world, and then we pen the turret cheeks, because, yeah, 900 pen, um, and that was a top tier heavy that basically couldn't deal any damage to us, and we were just pumping him full. Uh, and then here you go, the typical feature of, uh, and the balancing feature of this tank is, oh look, it's another Object 477A, we both can't pen each other, and we just basically have to sit there and hope that we can deal damage, and yeah, I mean, uh, a very fun and dynamic gameplay, I mean, we bounce off the back of the enemy 477A, the matchmaker is filled with them right now as well, because, uh, Yep, fun and balanced, but we help our team out by at, at least trying to take this one out. We see that the enemy one is actually moving up that was next to me, so uh, hopefully we can poke him and deal the damage. Uh, that's the side of him. Um, yep, that's the side of him with 900 pen. You can see where I'm I'm getting to with this thing. Uh, you know, some of the other vehicles in the game, they, uh, they do have uh, slightly less penetration. I mean, the MBT-70 that we saw, 400 pen. That, that, that would be good to come up against one of these things that has, you know, probably a thousand armor or something stupid with regards to its effective armor. So, yeah, I mean, 11,600 damage done in this game. Um, you know, expertly played, of course. It's got nothing to do uh, with the tank, you know. It's, uh, it's obviously my skill at the game that has allowed me to do as much damage as we've got in this game. Um, but... Yeah, very, very difficult game to play. Really had to carry hard. I mean, really tank uh, to be trying to take me out was, of course, uh, the 477A on the enemy team. Surprise, surprise. Um, and, yeah, if you see in just a second when we pull up the team score, um, that, yeah, we did uh, nearly twice uh, the damage of basically every single person in the team and actually, near, well, probably more like three times the damage of everyone else on the team. Uh, coming top, of course, with 11,600 damage, a 785 assist. We also then got a 844,000 silver payout because of the 65% silver bonus with, of course, premium time and stuff like that. And only a third class badge in this thing because, yeah, 11,600 damage, pretty balanced. Uh, and there you go, the 477As on the team doing uh, perfectly fine as well, 5,500 damage each, basically. And uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty solid games. But let's jump into the next one and we'll continue this discussion. Now then, the next gameplay that we do have is on one of the newer maps. It's Zvorogorsk, of course, for some of you uh, that might not know this map. It is uh, a map that is, uh, well, it was a very old one. Uh, and it was uh, recently added back in. It is essentially your typical three corridor map. You've got the center where a lot of the medium tanks and tanks that can, uh, you know, mobilize around and get behind buildings and stuff. 
uh, pretty quickly and just basically be a bit of a nuisance the enemy team will go and then you've got the two heavy routes which is typically dominated by one side each one side wins this side where we're at right now and the other side is won by the other team because that's just typically how this game plays it's very uh, unusual to see a fairly balanced matchup on either side and it often leads to you know just steamrolling of one flank and you're going to see that in this game uh, but I chose this replay because you know we've had better games in this tank um, but it kind of shows what I wanted to highlight uh, with regards to how this tank plays up against some of the other vehicles in the game now I try and push forward uh, unfortunately I end up hitting into the back of the thumper I was expecting him to just go uh, so my apologies to the thumper player there, I should have probably not been such a bot. And then we go for the shot on the Leopard 1A5 and unfortunately the accuracy of this tank, you know, probably the only balancing feature, it's not insane and you can miss shells uh, as you're going to see in this game. And it is a little bit infuriating, uh, but you know, if you do actually fully aim and you use all of your accuracy perks and stuff that you have in the game, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, and there you go we got a little ping spike there which allowed us to uh, to hit into the building so you see me getting just slightly annoyed but we don't manage to get any extra damage but don't worry because we can always just YOLO in uh, in the mid and late game as well to try and get some extra damage too uh, and the key thing is that when you do play this tank there is genuinely just no chance of you actually losing silver to be honest with you I am firing uh, no premium because premium is the uh, essentially like heat rounds uh, and yeah pretty horrible uh, to use heat rounds in Cold War and they also have like no penetration I think they've only got like 180 pen with those uh, with the premium rounds which is just terrible I mean it's literally only good for firing at light tanks and you do 900 damage if you use them but for the most part probably not useful in uh, yeah 90% of the games but we've done 2600 damage so far and it's just a case of trying to push off some more damage up against these things like the challenger and just help out the team try and go for a little uh, free aim shot there badly aimed by me but you know sometimes you have to take them and not much point in trying to fully aim there uh, because it, we just wouldn't have been able to fully aim 100% anyway but I decide to push towards the opponents hopefully we can get the back end of some of these tanks it looks like we're going to win so I wouldn't be surprised if we do manage to do that. I'm hoping the team will follow me in and help me out since we are just pushing from behind. And here you go, the back end of an object 477A, probably the easiest uh, pen that you could get. Yep, we did actually pen it. Oh yes, yeah, surprise, surprise, we did pen a 477A. And here you go, here comes the Yola Wagon in Salty Arc Hunter. Yes, uh, fantastic. And there you go. There's the actual weak point of this vehicle. You saw where we hit there, right on the upper hole next to where the viewport is. So this is quite possibly the only sort of area that you can hit quite easily. But remember, when tanks are moving and turning so quickly, it's difficult to actually pinpoint that weak point. And here you go. Your typical, uh, you know, um, generic game in the 477A. Oh, it's like watching old people do the business, if you know what I mean. Ah, yes, uh, dealing damage only when you expose the side or get turned to the side. And here you go, another tank coming in to bounce off of us. And maybe we can deal with damage. And just residing to the fact that, yeah, just getting pounded. Um, yeah, I mean, very fun and pretty, pretty balanced tank, to be honest with you. And, uh, yeah don't quite know what wargaming were doing uh, when they decided to make this one but then again we've had some pretty overpowered tanks in the past and why am I not surprised uh, that we see more tanks like this every single time that they think that they're gonna have a balanced tank and of course get completely sidetracked with uh, what balance is supposed to mean in the game um, but I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are because in my opinion this is just disgusting uh, mainly because yes it does have weak points yes it can be penned they're so small and a pain in the ass to hit that you're not just basically going to be able to do it very often and also the fact that you know you're going to have to try and hit people when they're doing 60 kilometers an hour 70 kilometers an hour in these small weak points and um, where they can get hold down and you see there a teammate on the uh, or a player in on my team managed to deal 12,000 damage in uh, the object 477a so uh, this was basically my games when I play this tank. It's just uh, seeing more Object 477As coming top every game 
and yeah basically this tank entirely and we earned 430,000 silver uh, for literally having a pretty bog standard pretty rubbish game in this vehicle but yeah let me know what you think of this tank uh, and what you would change about it. Do you think it's uh, overpowered? It, have I got it completely wrong? Is it actually terrible? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. But overall consensus is uh, if you want a broken tank and you want to spend 50, well 45 to 50 pounds on it, then maybe you could get this one. But yeah, I mean, is it that fun to play a tank that's that overpowered? No, not particularly, uh, and it's definitely not very rewarding when you do have these ridiculous games. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you found it informative and you know where to actually try and take these things out. Uh, my best bet to you guys is to try and get around the side of it and pen it through. The inner drive wheel is basically your only real way of penning this in the majority of tanks at this tier. But yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow where we have a look at some other tanks aren't quite as overpowered as this, but definitely very, very strong.